It's Annalise here to give you some drafting, 101 drafting with Annalise. Welcome. Okay, so on Moodle, I will have put this drawing plus another elevation drawing, which I won't show you yet because you don't need to look at it yet, um, on, on the Moodle in week five, I believe. Um, and we're going to draw this up today as part of our um, technical drawing uh, plan. <laughs> anyway, it's a floor plan. This is a floor plan of an ensuite. Uh, the dark bits around here are solid walls. Anything that's filled in in a dark colour is a solid wall. This is a fixed window. It's probably got a, um, a sheet of frosted glass in it so people can't see into the bathroom from the outside, but light comes in. And then we've got a sliding, internal sliding door here or a pocket door as it's called as well, either of which they both work. Um, with a sliding pocket door or a sliding internal door, um, some of the door has to actually sit out so that you can see the door is actually going to be sliding in and out. You can bring it out a little bit further, but I've just brought it out to here. The other thing is, is that sometimes um, you can't let this type of door go all the way in because it depends on where you put the handle on the door. It's an, an aside to what we're doing at the moment. Um, you will, and let me just bring this in a bit so that you can see the whoops no 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 whoops that one no not that one it's that one is it that one no of course not of course I wouldn't be able to there we go I'm just going to bring that in a little bit so that you can see this a bit more clearly there we go sorry about that guys but um what what's going on now that's better you can see it a little bit better now it's a very fine line but you can just see it and then there's an arrow that goes that has uh, an arrowhead or a line that has an arrowhead on either end that's to indicate that the door is sliding backwards and forwards okay um, we've got this little triangle here and that little triangle is a elevation symbol they come in different forms which I'll go through at a later date with you but this is totally acceptable. The other reason why we're using this one is because you don't have a circuit template and it's very difficult for you guys to get one at the moment. We have an opening door here. This is a glass door. This is a shower. This is a um, drain, a, a long uh, drain that sits at the end so that the water all goes down through there. Uh, glass wall here, a toilet, that is not wall mounted it's just an ordinary toilet uh, against the wall two basins up here which are going to be floating all right around the outside are what we call dimensions um, I will do or go through each one of these with you there's a set of documents I can give you that will help you understand why you dimension and how a dimension works um, but we'll get on to that later when we actually start to draw these in. We're not going to draw these in today. We're just going to draw or set up this drawing here. All right, so let's go. At the top of each one of these, which is um, a dimension number telling you how big or how long or what the gap is between different things so for instance there's a 300 gap between the edge of that wall and the edge of the basin so there's the 300 indicating that that's what's happening this drawing we are going to do at 1 to 20 however some of you might not still have your scale rulers so at the top above each one of the numbers going all the way around the page on the dimensioning you will find a centimeter measurement so you'll find that above the 300 you'll find that it's one and a half centimeters above the 500 it's 2.5 centimeters etc etc now that's for people only for people who don't have a scale ruler yet all right the rest of us who do have a scale ruler, we will be drawing in the scale of 1 to 20, which is this little number here. 
each one of let me just do this a little bit more easily for you so this is 1 to 20 1 2 dots 20 and then we have a 0 then we have a 0 0.5 well that's 500 millimeters and then this is one or they can't really see the one because it's un underneath that line there we've got a 1.5 and we've got a 2 the 2 is better to see now that 2 is actually 2 meters and every one of these little sections here is 100 100 100 100 and then it gets to 500 and then 600 700 800 900 one meter and that's how they go in between each one of these from zero to this first little mark here there's five gaps and those five gaps are 20 mil each okay just keep an eye out on that we will go over this again scale is difficult to learn first um, to begin with um, I think I'll turn the autofocus off because it's it's going weird oh it is off okay good um, it's still going weird anyway hopefully you guys can see this a bit better uh, so this is 1 to 20 so that's the scale we're going to use so far we used the scale 1 to 50 which is this one here when we were drawing our windows and doors okay now we're going to draw at a scale of 1 to 20 and you'll notice that 1 to 20 looks much bigger than 1 to 50 okay so let's have a look of what we've got here and how we're going to set up our page I've got an A4 page here I know that some of you might not have um, A3 paper and that's actually absolutely fine so um, I'm just going to use A4 and later on we might put it onto A3 paper. We'll just start off with the A4. I'm going to move that forward a little bit, just a little bit, so that you can see the top of my page. Good. Alrighty. So I've stuck my paper down using um, magic tape. And I've also used my scale ruler to make sure that the paper is straight against the sides of my, um, whoops, the sides and the bottom of my drafting table. So I'm going to use my T-square um, and put it across. And you basically, you bring the paper in and underneath. Okay, so... You'll slide your paper without sticking it down. Don't stick it down yet. I'll just take those two sticky bits off. So when you first set up your paper, you work out how far you want it away from the bottom of your desk. You want it so that it's at a height that's comfortable for you to draw. So it might be lower down or it might be further up. You might have really long arms, so you might have it up here, but don't do that. Um, I've got very short arms, so mine's down here. So put your T-square against the side of your drawing board or your dining table or your um, kitchen bench top and then slide your piece of A4 paper under this little piece of plastic, okay, or, um, yeah, this piece of plastic until it hits the timber underneath. So there's a little step. So that makes sure that our paper is going to be straight um, and it keeps it where it's supposed to be. Then hold it down and then place your two pieces of magic tape at the top and stick it down. Remember, I always do a little fold. You can't see it on that one. But I do a little fold on my pieces of magic tape. Um, so that I can easily take them off afterwards and it doesn't make it difficult to get my drawings off the table. doesn't leave the sticky tape on the table either, which is really hard to get off if you leave it on there too long. And then you guys can stick down both the bottom part here and here. Um, and I will do that while we're here so you can see the folding technique. So a couple of little pieces. 
fold the very tip of it, fold the very tip of that one, and then just across the bottom like that. Okay, my fingers are obviously really, really dirty because I keep getting dirty stuff all over the place. And then down there. So you make sure that's all nice and smooth. I put a ding in my paper. Don't put a ding in your paper, but that's okay. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is normally on every drawing that you have, you will have what's called a title block, which I haven't got one here at the moment. I'll show it to you later. But we're just going to leave enough space at the bottom of any drawing that we do that will allow a title block to sit in there. And the reason why I don't draw the title block up first is because if I decide to start again, I want to start my drawing again. I don't want to have to come back and keep doing my title block every time. A lot of people start with the title block. I'm just going to leave the space so that I can get on with the drawing and I can do my title block last. So the space we're going to leave is about four centimetres if you've got an ordinary everyday average ruler, which is one of these, and you just measure up four centimetres and make a mark on one side of your page. If you have a T-square, then you can use your T-square to draw a straight line. If you don't have a T-square and you are doing this by hand, you don't have to stick the paper down. As long as you measure from the edge, both sides, from the bottom and from the edge, and up here, so you go one, two, three, four sets of, me you know, of measurements to make sure your page is going to be straight when you start to draw, but you don't have to stick it down because it's too difficult to maneuver this around while you're doing it so you can you don't have to stick it down if you're using one of these all right um, and if you don't have a t-square that's that's the thing if you do have a t-square but not a scale ruler then stick it down stick the paper down as I've shown all right so we've left our four centimeters at the bottom here so we've got enough space for us to be able to put in a title block later now we want to put this drawing that we're doing, that we have here, um, so it sits in the centre of what I call the drawing space, which is above where I've drawn my divide for my title block. Title block down here. This is going to be my drawing space area. This is where I want to put my drawing. I want to get my drawing in the centre of the page, and to do that, going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to draw from this line here to the opposite corner here, diagonally across the page like so, and around to there. And I'm just going to put a tiny little mark here in the center, just a very light line. And I'll do the same on the other side. From the top corner to where I drew that first line to leave space for my title block. Whoops, I'll just do that a bit darker. I don't think you guys can see it. Let me just do that again. So a bit darker. And then you can see that we found the very centre of all this area. That's how you can find the centre of anything really, you know, anything that's um, a rectangle or a square. Circle's a little bit more difficult, but anyway, we're not talking about that. Once I've found the centre of my drawing, I'm going to do draw a straight line going across. And I'm going to draw a vertical line going across. If you don't have a T-square, what you will do is you will measure how far it is from the crossing line to the edge of your page and you will put a line, you'll have that line, but then you'll go up here, you'll put a dot up there so that you've got two points of reference to draw a straight line. And the same with this one. How far this is from here, go over to this side of the page, use that measurement to mark it on the side of the page, and then you can um, line your ruler up between that point and that point to draw your horizontal line. Okay. 
Right, so so as not to confuse ourselves too much, what we're going to do is take away that a bit of that crossing line so that we don't get too confused. So we've found the centre of our drawing area. We know that our overall measurement or measurements for the internal, because we are only looking at the internal of this, is 2 metres from here to here internally and 26 millimetres from here to here. Okay. What I'm going to do, half of 200 or 2,000, sorry, half of 2,000 is 1,000. Half of 26 is, whoops, is 1,300. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm doing those numbers is so that I can place my measuring tool, whether it's a one of these or whether it's the other one or whether it's a scale ruler. And the first one, half of 2,000 two millimetres, is one. So I'm going to put my one here and line it up with the center point and I'm going to mark off my zero and I'm going to mark off my two meters and then for my 26 which goes this long way I find 13 and I can even mark it on my ruler so I don't lose it when I go to turn my ruler sideways and I I'm going to, and I'm going to bring that in a bit closer so that you can see. And one more time. Whoops. There we go. Um, so there's my 1300, that mark I had on there. I'll put that on the very center and I'll mark zero and then 26 up here. Okay, so that's zero and 26. Then I can draw the first part of my drawing. So very lightly we can draw all the way across. Got a bit of a prob with the, one of the leads here and all the way across here. Just gently, okay? We, we sort of want to keep those lines in there. And then do the same this way. Okay, so it goes up the page and just coming down this way. Don't draw through this four centimetres that's left down the bottom here, over this line here. Yeah, I'm just so you can't see it at the moment. And very gently from top to this line here that you first drew. And that's the internal of our beautiful bathroom okay so that's two meters or two thousand millimeters and then from here to here is twenty six thousand again if you don't have a t-square once you've made those measurements out like that you can then by using this make them over here so you've got two points to line your ruler up with okay and the same for this one over this side you'll just measure that same measurement up here okay because you've got a center point there so you measure that and then you'll have two points on that side and do the up the um, mirror image on the other side here and you'll have two points to line this up to draw this rectangle in the center here okay we will then start to look at the other dimensions that are happening here or the other yeah the thicknesses of the wall and things like that so i'm going to add on this wall up here is 100 millimeters this wall here is 100 millimeters this wall here is 120 millimeters and so is this one 120 millimeters 
again I've put the centimetre equivalent on top. A big shout out to the to Miss um, Sonna for that. Brilliant idea. And we shall now go about putting on those measurements. So we've got one centimetre, one millimetre, 100 millimetres, I'm sorry, and 100 millimetres is just from here to here, okay? And 120 is from here and just up one notch. So it's a little bit thicker, not by much. So I'll just pop those in. I'll do this one, which is the one. And then I will do this one, which is one. I will do this one, which is the six. And this one, which is trying not to lose the paper sliding off the off the board is the six as well and they're slightly bigger so let's just draw those in very lightly as well very lightly oops I'll do this while I'm over here that's the 100 so we'll draw that in very lightly all the way down and then do the two horizontals which are the 120. There's that one. And there's the 100 there. Okay. So now we've got a box outside a box, which is slightly off center, but that's okay. We'll be fine. Let's try to put in the window and let's put in this door here as well. So if I look on this side, because measurements, any measurement that's to do with this side of the building or the floor plan or the elevation will be on this side. Occasionally you will get some measurements from this side of the drawing over here, but not always. Okay. Um, so let's have a look. We've got from here to here, is one meter or 1000 millimeters and then we've got 800 and then we've got well 400 and 400 which gives us 800 until we get to this wall here but we can mark off that 400 as well and we can also do something like okay keep our ruler on the page and go 1000 millimeters 1800 millimeters and then we can add 400 onto 800 which gives us 22 not 22,000 but 2.2 to 2,000 millimeters <laughs> and we can put that in that way try not to move your ruler what you don't want to have to do or what we don't want to have happen is you don't want to be picking your ruler up and moving it to make those marks on your drawing if it makes more sense to you you've got 1000 here and then you can write 1800 here and then you can write 22,000 like as you're adding these up so that you can see it there already makes it easier for you to do what you're doing it gives you a much more and it's called a, like a running measurement and what it does is it gives you um, a much more accurate um, drawing because you're not moving your ruler every time you move your ruler you are a little bit off on either side of what you've got so you have to be very careful so it's better to do a running measurement so we had 1000 and then we had 1800 and then we had 22. Did I get that right? Can somebody, oh no, that is 26. So why is that only three? Did I, I did do that 26, didn't I? Or have I completely gone mad? No, it is 26 and that's, oh, 
Oh, sorry. There's it. There it is. I kept. That's what's going on. And get rid of the mark I've left on my ruler, which has made me. There's twenty-two. There we go. That's twenty-two. I'll just pop that there like that, so I can see it. So I've got those marks along that side, but I'm only going to draw. on this side and that's where this first one is but this one is actually the depth of this from here to here so I am very lightly going to go from one side of here all the way through until I hit the edge of the page okay and that gives me my door opening which is in here. Sorry. Oh, I'm a terrible person. Sorry, that's not right. Just ignore that line there. That that is not one. That is not one. Me, hundred thousand. That's not one thousand millimeters. That's one thousand millimeters. Sorry, my mistake. So we've got. 1,804 and 4. I'm not doing very well today, am I? <sighs> All right. Moving on. Let's put in the window. Okay. So we've got from here to the opening of the window, we've got 1,600 millimetres. Then we've got 600. Or we can come down from the top and we can go 400, which we've already put in. And then we can just measure down from there the 1,600 16, millimetres for the window. So I know I've got my... I know I've got my 400 from here to here. And then I will go 6 after that. And 6 after... That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is a metre from the top internally. Got my 400 so I can push that off to the side and I'm going to push this one off to the side very lightly. So this is the beginning of my drawing. Now I'm going to darken in a few lines so that I can start to see what's happening. Remember there's a door here and a window here. So let's darken in the things that we are going to keep. So not so much this one. Opening of the door, the window, and then internally I'm going to draw in the walls. I'm not going to do this line dark yet. It's there for a reason um, and it'll help me. It's like a, what we call a structural line and I'll do intern, internally down here and then I'll do the external and I will do this one coming across here. Remember to cross your line slightly. I am also bringing this off to one side a little bit because this is part of a bigger drawing and when you see something like this coming out poking out a little bit or you will see it in at an angle sometimes like this or it will be empty and it will have what is um a symbol to say that it's cutting through it's a cut line it means that the, there's another part of the drawing there that we don't need to pay attention to because we're only looking at this and again up here the same thing happens it doesn't happen in here because there is another part of the, a room around there so that's why those two poke up there by themselves it's to say that this is an external wall and it's um, coming out past here but we don't have to draw the rest of it we just want those parts and I can measure up that by just 
100 again to get that. Then do all your vertical lines on the outside, down, and then this one's going to come all the way down and over here. And then over here. Oops, I should have drawn that one down too. It's best to, if you've got a line that goes all the way across the page, it's best to draw the whole thing all at one time. And then I'm just going to do that. Okay. And now we're starting to see that this, the drawing I'm doing at the moment, which I keep losing the thing for, it's starting to come together. I'm starting to see the same shape. Okay. We've got the door, we've got the window, and then we've got it. We will be coming to do this a bit later, but I'm not going to do it yet. We'll just do it a bit later. I mean, we can do it now, actually. That might be a good idea. Okay. Let's do that then. All right. So we've got an 800 opening here. We need to make sure that there is at least 800 depth here. So it'll go right back. Oh, it's going to go right back further. Oh, no, it might not go back right back further. It'll go back to about 750 in this case. We're going to make it go back 750. So I'll find 7 and I'll find 50 and I'll put a mark there. Okay. And then across here is 1. 100. And we have to try and divide this up by having 30 on both sides and then 40 in the middle. What I suggest you do, because it's so tiny, is you find the center and you get it as close as you possibly can. It's a little bit difficult, but I'm going to get you to use your judgment for that. Make sure it looks like it's going to be in the center. And it looks like it's 40 mil. And 40 mil or 40 millimeters is two of these little things here. That's 40 mil. So we want that for our actual door opening. I'll just put this in. That was our 750 that I measured from here to here and that just gives me a place to I suppose we could just measure in 30 on each side or 20 on each side or yeah, 20 on each side or something like that but anyway it's going to be there so that's where this is going to be it's a hard one to do, but try and make try and make it look like these two are smaller and this is larger, or at least 40 millimetres from the centre. And then we will leave this door sitting out almost halfway. As I said, it's best to keep a door, a sliding door, uh, slightly over the door opening so people know that that's what it is. Whether it's on the outside or the inside, you leave it slightly over. And I'm going to go, okay, well then if this is my the beginning of my door, which if I bring it out, it's probably about the four, um, from the edge of the door, I'll bring it out to 40, which is about there. Well, I can bring it out to 30 actually, that'll be fine. So 300 from the edge of the door frame. So that's where my door's going to stop. And then I'll measure from that. my 800 and I'm going to do it 850 now the reason why I've made the door 850 rather than just 800 is so that when you pull the door out and it hits the other side here a small portion of the door remains inside the wall so you get a much better seal and doesn't rattle around and it also gives much better privacy too as well. So 
this overall door, though this opening is 800, the overall door will be 850 so that 50% of it can stay in the wall so it makes a good and solid connection. And then the actual um, pocket or um, internal area where the door goes into is only 75. It, it could be 80, it could be 800. It's just so when it goes in, 50% sits out so that you can grab a handle or something like that. All right. So there we go. That one's there. That one is there. And then that one's there and that one's there. So that's our door on that side. Let's have a look at our window. Normally windows have a window frame around them. This is a fixed window as we already know what a fixed window does. It just has a piece of glass going from one side to the other. This is 40 mil and this is 40 mil thickness. Okay, they do vary, but we're just going to make it 40 mil. Okay, so each one of these here, these rectangles here, will be 40 mil. All right. So I will measure down the 40 mil, which is two of those that way, and then up, which is there. And then I'll draw two lines going across that one. So this is the window frame, okay, which will, which if I could actually draw a, a line on the dot properly, let's do that, is here, that's better. So there's our window frame and then you could find 3 mil, you measure in 3 mil, make a mark and then draw a line going down and you can draw that line quite hard because that's the one and I'm just going to sort of make it look a bit thicker. And there is our first initial step of drawing this area here. Okay, now I'm going to stop this for now so that you guys can catch yourselves up and see if you can't, oh, missed a bit, see if you can't, uh, see if, how you go with just this much for next week and then we can, I'll do another one a bit later on, uh, put it up, but we'll go through it again um, when we're in class. Have a go, see how you go. Um, print this out if you can or look at it on your screen. Remember that the numbers above here in red are for anybody who doesn't have a scale ruler and you have to use a centimetre ruler, okay? It gives you the centimetre equivalence of what we're doing. But you'll still end up with a drawing that's drawn at 1 to 50. 1 to 20, 20, 20, 1 to 20. Sorry, there we go. Um, and then we'll come in here and start to do these areas here by using these measurements. Okay, thanks guys.